In this video, you're gonna learn everything you need to know about Java interfaces. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to write Java code with confidence. Hi, I'm Mash Hamadani, and I've taught millions of people how to code through this channel and my online school, codewithmash.com. This video is part of my ultimate Java mastery course. So once you finish this video, if you wanna learn more, you may wanna look at the complete course. Now let's jump in and get started. Let's start this section by defining functional interfaces. A functional interface is an interface with only a single abstract method. So earlier we talked about the comparable interface. This interface has a single abstract method called compare to. So this is a functional interface. We also talked about the comparator interface. That is a functional interface as well. Now in this video, I'm gonna create a functional interface from scratch. We're gonna use this functional interface throughout this section. So in this package, lambdas, I'm gonna add a new class. Let's call this printer and change the kind to interface. So this is the interface of a printer. In one implementation, we may wanna print on the terminal. In another implementation, we may want to talk to an actual printer. So we could have different implementations of this interface. Now, what operations do we need here? We need a single method for printing a message. So void print message. Now we have an interface with a single abstract method. So this is a functional interface. Now in the second part of this series, I told you that in the recent years, Java introduced the concept of default methods in interfaces. These default methods can have implementation. So we can have a default method like this, default void print twice, which takes a message and prints it twice. So we can have code, we can have implementation in an interface. Now I told you that in my opinion, this is a bad approach that the Java team has taken because interfaces should not have implementation. They should only be used as contracts. But that aside, what I wanna point out here is that this interface has two methods. One of them is a default method with implementation. The other is an abstract method. This interface is still a functional interface because it has a single abstract method. So it doesn't matter if we have many default or even static methods in our interfaces. As long as we have a single abstract method, we refer to that interface as a functional interface. Now, let me delete this ugly default method. All right, so let's go ahead and implement this interface in a class. I'm gonna add a new class called console printer. In this implementation, we're gonna print on the console or terminal. So let's have this class implement the printer interface. Here we're gonna add a print statement and print this message. Pretty straightforward, right? Now, back to our demo class. Here I'm gonna create a static method, public static. I'm using static so I can easily call it from this other static method. It doesn't have to be static. So public static void greet. This method needs a printer. So here we're gonna to talk to the printer interface. We don't care about the implementation. We are programming to an interface, okay? So printer, then we call printer.print. And here we can say, hello world. Now, in our show method, I'm gonna call the greet method. Here we need to pass an object that implements the printer interface. So we can use our console printer object. Now, when we run this program, we see the hello world message. So pretty straightforward. Now, sometimes we don't wanna explicitly create a class to implement an interface because this requires writing a bit of code. Sometimes we may not wanna reuse this class. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use anonymous inner classes for this purpose. So in the last video, we passed a new instance of our console printer class to the greet method. Now, as I told you, sometimes we don't wanna explicitly create a class to implement an interface. Perhaps we wanna implement an interface only once and use it for a single purpose. We don't wanna reuse that class. So that's where we use anonymous inner classes. So instead of creating a new instance of the console printer class, here we can type new printer. So we type the name of the interface and press enter. What we have here is called 
an anonymous inner class. It's anonymous because this class doesn't have a name. It's just an implementation. And we call it an inner class because we're using this inside a method, okay? So in this class, we're implementing the print method. Here we can use a print statement to print this message. Now, when we run this program, we get the exact same result. So this is how we can use an anonymous inner class. With anonymous inner classes, we can achieve the same result by writing less code. But Java 8 introduced a better and more concise way to achieve the same result. That's called a Lambda expression, and we're gonna look at that next. So our greet method talks to the printer interface, and this is a functional interface because it has a single abstract method. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could implement this method in a standalone function, like a function that exists on its own without belonging to a class? That is what Lambda expressions are for. So a Lambda expression is like an anonymous function that we can pass around. Let me show you. So I'm gonna rewrite this code using a Lambda expression. First, we call the greet method. Now here we wanna pass an implementation of the print method as an anonymous function. So this print method has a single parameter of type string. Let's add that over here. This is where we list our parameters. So string message. After parenthesis, we add an arrow. This is called the Lambda operator. And then we add braces to represent the body of this function. Now, what should we do here? We should add a print statement and print this message on the console. What we have over here is called a Lambda expression. So if you have a functional interface, we can represent this functional interface using a Lambda expression. That is why these interfaces are called functional because they represent a function. So here we have a Lambda expression. As you can see, this code is very clean and concise, but we can make it better. First of all, we can remove the type of this parameter. The Java compiler knows that this parameter is a string object because the Lambda expression that we pass over here will be checked against the signature of the print method. So the Java compiler knows that this method has a single parameter and the type of this parameter is string. So we don't have to repeat that type over here. If I type message dot, now we can see all the string methods. By the same token, if I add another parameter here, the Java compiler complains because it knows that our print method has a single parameter, but here we're passing two parameters, okay? So for the most part, we can exclude the type of parameters and let the Java compiler infer them. Now, if you have a single parameter, we can also remove this parenthesis. That makes our code cleaner and more concise. We use parenthesis only if we have no parameters or if we have a method with multiple parameters. So we separate these parameters using a comma just like how we declare the parameters of a method, okay? So here we have a single parameter and we don't need parentheses. Also, if the body of this function has a single line of code, we don't need these braces either. So I can clean up this code by pressing Alt and Enter and selecting replace with expression Lambda. There you go. So this Lambda expression looks really clean and concise. Compare this with an anonymous inner class. This is really ugly. So let me remove this. All right, now here we're passing a Lambda expression as an argument to a method, but we can also store a Lambda expression in a variable. For example, we can declare a variable of type printer and set it to a new console printer. So this is a concrete implementation, or we can set this to a Lambda expression. So here we say message goes to print message. So Lambda expressions are essentially objects, but we can use them to represent anonymous functions. In the body of this Lambda, we're using the message parameter that we have declared over here, but we can also access the local variables in the enclosing method. So I'm gonna declare a variable called prefix and set it to hyphen. Now, here we can reference prefix and then append the message. So when we run, we get hyphen hello world. We can also access the static fields 
and then closing class. So I'm going to move this from here and declare it as a static field in this class, public static string prefix. I set it to hyphen. Now we can access it in our Lambda expression. So when we run, we get the same result as before. We can also access the instance fields. So I'm going to make this an instance field and also make the show method an instance method. So as you can see, we can access the prefix field. Now, what about this? What do you think this represents here? It represents the current instance of the Lambda's demo class. So if you type dot, you can see the prefix field and the show method. So this is one of the differences between Lambda expressions and anonymous inner classes. In Lambda expressions, this references the enclosing object, whereas in anonymous inner classes, this references the current instance of the anonymous inner class. Another difference between these two types is that anonymous inner classes can have state, so they can have fields to store some data. In Lambda expressions, we cannot have fields because this Lambda expression is just representing an anonymous function. So we cannot have instance fields here. We cannot have state. We can only access the local variables declared in the enclosing object, as well as the static and instance fields in the enclosing class. Sometimes all we do in a Lambda expression is passing the parameter or parameters to an existing method. For example, over here, we're simply passing this message to the print line method of this object. In these cases, it's easier to reference this method directly. Let me show you. So here's the syntax. We type the name of the class or the object that contains this method. Then we type double colons, followed by the name of the method without parenthesis, because we don't want to call this method. We just want to add a reference to it. For example, if I want to rewrite this Lambda expression using a method reference, I would type greet. Now, what is the object that contains the print line method? It's this object, right? So we type system.out. Then we add double colons followed by the name of the method without parenthesis. So this is a method reference. And this code is identical to what we have over here. Now, with IntelliJ, we can always convert these kind of Lambda expressions to a method reference very easily. So we put the caret on the body of the Lambda, press Alt and Enter, and then replace Lambda with method reference. There you go. Now, with these method references, we can reference static or instance methods in a class, as well as constructors. Let me show you a few examples. So I'm going to delete these and add a static method in this class, public static void print message. Now the signature of this method matches the print method of our printer interface. Okay. So here we call the greet method. We should pass a printer object. So here we can use a Lambda expression message. We take it and pass it to this method, right? Again, all we're doing here is passing the parameter to an existing method. So we can use a meta reference here. We type the name of the class that contains this method. In this case, lambdas demo. So lambdas demo, then double colons, followed by the name of the method. There you go. Or you can convert this using IntelliJ. Now, what if this was an instance method? Let's see how it works. So I'm going to create a lambdas demo object. Demo, we set it to a new instance of the lambdas demo class. Now we want to call the greet method and pass a lambda expression like this. Message goes to demo dot. Here we want to call this instance method. So print message. Now to use a method reference, we type the name of the object that contains this method, demo, double colons, and print. If we use IntelliJ, we get the exact same result. Now, what about passing a value to a constructor? Let's take a look. So delete. I'm going to add a constructor here. In this constructor, we want to add a string parameter. Now, let's say we call the greet method and pass a message to the constructor of the Lambda's demo class. How can we use a method reference here? Well, we type the name of the class that is lambdas demo, double colon, 
And here we type new to represent the constructor. If we use IntelliJ, we get the exact same result. So with method references, we can write compact and easier to read Lambda expressions. Thank you so much for watching this video. As I said, this video is part of my ultimate Java mastery course that teaches you everything you need to know about Java from the basics to more advanced concepts. So if you wanna learn more, I highly encourage you to take the full course. It's much faster than jumping from one tutorial to another. If you're interested, the link is below this video. Thank you and have a great day.